Hello, I'm Venus from Hearts Desire by Venus and today I'm going to show you something a little different. Um, I'm participating in a collaboration with Sweet Pea Papers. Um, she just launched her new vintage Christmas kit as being in July. We're doing Christmas in July. So this is what I came up with. This is a little mini journal folio. It is five by seven. So of course you can fit your five by seven photos in here if you wanted. Um, but I think it's kind of cute. So I'm just going to do a side view here. You can see it's only got, there we go, a half inch spine on the top. So it's not very big, but you could adjust this accordingly if you wanted to. Um, but this is what you do when you flip it up. Okay, so this is the bottom part here. There is a little junk journal that I did here. This one's got a little pocket with one of the envelopes from her kit. A little card in it. That just slides in there. There's still room in there for you to put tags or whatever you would like. But I made just a small junk journal here. As you can see, I've got some coffee dyed papers. These are all ephemera from the uh, kit she's got. I love this kit. It's a very vintagey feel for sure. And nice soft colors, which I like. I'm not a huge bright red fan. So these are kind of tiled down, which is perfect how I like. So I did that. And then underneath is a pocket. Again, another one of the envelopes from her kit. I'll put this in frame here a little bit better so you can see. And then a couple of cards that she has in her kit as well. And I basically inked them and distressed them on the back. And those just go in the bottom pocket here. Of course, now I can't get it in, right? Because I'm on camera. There we go. So there's your junk journals. But on the top, um, I did get this idea, a version of this from somebody. Um, I will put her link below. I can't remember offhand what her name is. But she did a, a tutorial and I kind of used that as my jumping off point. So this one does. And again, all these papers and all these cards and ephemera pieces, they're all from Sweet Pea Papers. And I'll put the link to her place down there, as well as all the other people who are participating in this collaboration. Um, it opens up here. And I made a little pocket with uh, some tags in there. And... This is what I love about this. Let's see if I can get all in one shot. It is a trifold. Uh, let's see, can I get you in? I can kind of get you in, but you'll see my super messy desk. Um, so let's do this side here. So then you've got a little flip up here. These words, sentiments, are in her kit as well. And so it trifolds this way, and of course, this way. You can put photos in there or I don't know whatever you would like put more pockets if you wanted and then on the other side so there's the the front of that with the pocket that I did but then it flips up this way and again I used another one of her little cards her little word cards and some of her clip art put on here so in when you close it all up goes like that and I'll do it one more time like that which I think is cute and then what I did is in the middle I put a pocket here I'm just gonna pull that out again there is another ticket stub there which I'll hang down there she's got these great little oval cards and then this is just one of the little cards she had just on some coffee dyed paper that go in there as well. So it's a super sweet. Um, 
like I said, I did not come up with this whole idea on my own, but I did run with it after I watched this lady's video, which again, I will link below. So, and then I just used some old uh, strips of fabric that I had, vintage fabric there. And then it all folds up, there's the back side, into this cute little package. Um, so I'm calling it a folio junk journal because you've got both in there, just a little one. Could be a good Christmas gift, it could be a teacher's gift. I mean, you could do this for so many things, it'd be perfect to pop in your purse. But I'm going to show you how I made this because it is pretty easy. So what I started with is some coffee dyed papers. Oh, my camera zoomed out. Waiting. There we go. Zoom back in. I went too fast, fast for it. So what I did is I have got four sheets of coffee dyed paper. Um, eight and a half by 11. And what I did is because the folio is a five by seven, I cut um, two pieces of five by seven paper down to five inches each. So it's five by 11. Inked up both sides of them. Okay. Then what I did is on two other sheets, I cut, well, yeah, I cut two pieces, five by seven and a half, because we need a seven and a half inch gusset on the top for your junk journal and for the spine. So I did two pieces that way. Okay, so the coffee dyed back and forth, but I mean, you could use whatever color you want. Um, I'm just continuing with that vintage feel in her papers. And then what I did is I scored on the two pieces that are five by seven and a half. I scored them at the seven inch mark, both sides. So you can see that there. And then on the one side, I put two sided tape. No, not remember, don't come up to the too close to the uh, edge here because that will be our cover and we don't want you on that spine. So all I did was put the two sided tape I've uh, pre-inked all the way around these because I think you guys all know how to do that. Let's take the tape off. And then all I'm going to do is line this up with a half inch spine on the other piece. Um, for two reasons. I mean, you could probably, if you had a 12 by 12 piece, I guess you wouldn't have to do this. Or 14, you know, like the longer ones. But what I've done this for is because in my version... Right here is the stitching for the junk journal. So I really wanted that spine to be sturdy enough. So there is basically your cover for this folio. So for the top part, which I'll move that out of the way. So the top part, which is this part here with all the flips, that's what I'm using the other two pieces for. So basically these are well, it's an eight and a half sheet cut down, so it's five by 11, two sheets, five by 11. And again, what I did on the one side here is I just ran some tape there, and I'm just going to peel that off and just overlap it just enough with my other piece to form one long one. Okay. So the width of my book is five inches. So what I did is I want this right in the middle. Um, so I got my scoring uh, blade here. And what I did is, because I want that right in the middle of a five inch. So obviously I'm going to score at two and a half inches away from this here. For that then I'm going to flip it around the other way and I'm going to do two and a half inches on the other side away from there so that gives me my five inch middle and then what I've done is, is I've taken this first line and I'm going to just score it five inches away from that score line so I've got another one and so, of course, this piece is going to be smaller because this is 11. 
So by the time we joined it, it was uh, 22 inches across. So it's not going to be even. But that's all right. That gives us that little fold in the little uh, piece at the beginning of it. So again, I'm going to flip it around the other side, score, put my score line on the five there so that I have that. So then, now all I'm going to do is just take my pieces and I'm going to accordion fold them and burnish them as I'm going. Okay, so there's that. Flip it around to the other side. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Just fold it, burnish, fold back, and burnish. So now you've got a W basically. And then it all folds up flat like that. So then I just do it flat and I'm just going to burnish it again just to make sure it's all good. And you can fold it whichever way you want. I just liked it this way. Um, really makes no difference. So then what I did is I decorated all this first. Then I placed my ribbon across the back side here and glued it down. Now you could do it reverse. You could do the that uh, little album here and do a journal up here, whichever way you want. But that's how I did it. So now you can decorate it. You can put pockets. You don't have to put pockets, however you want. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out the pieces of paper and I'm just going to assemble with you on screen here and uh, I'll be back as soon as I've got those done. Okay, so I'm back. So what I have done is cut up a few um, pieces from her kit. Now the first one you saw was a little bit more red and greens. She also has blue sections in this kit as well. These are one of the actual journaling cards that she had in there that I cut down to fit. This is actually one of the background papers. Uh, I'm just going to, so I've just inked them up, cut them down to the size. I'm just going to peel off my two-sided tape here and just layer them on. I do the big ones first and I try and do it with a couple images but also a couple of backgrounds so that when I put my pockets on um, you know you're not covering up images much so like this one is where I'm planning on putting a pocket so it's just a very light um, piece again this is also one of the papers that she had in there I'm just distressing it up it was quite the collection of colors, which I like. So this book I'm doing a little bit more in the blues and golds. And this is all in one kit. So that's what I really liked was is that you've got a variety in there. So you could be working on two books or two cards or two anything at the same time and have two different colors all at the same time out of one kit. Okay, I'm just peeling off this two-sided tape here. And you have to remember when you're doing these two that don't forget you got to cover because they're accordion folds. Got to make sure you cover both sides of the accordion fold. Again, this is one is another one that was a journaling card, a large journaling card she had, and I just cut it down to fit this uh, little book. And I'm just using two-sided tape, but honestly, you could use wet glue. Um, you could sew this if you wanted. I think if I was to do another one, I might actually just take it one more level and be sewing around it to give it a little bit more vintage feel. But it's totally up to you what you want to do. Uh, just for the sake of the camera here, really, I'm doing it uh, with two-sided tape to make it a little faster for you. To see what I'm doing. And, and I cut these um, a quarter inch smaller so that you've got a little bit of a, a window there. 
But again, that's totally up to you. You don't need to. Um, this one on this side. Again, that's another piece of that uh, light background paper that was in her kit. I'm just distressing it ever so slightly. And more tape. On here. And there is several people actually participating in this uh, collaboration. And I will list those below. So you can check out what everybody's doing. We've all got the same kit. And uh, so you'll get a, a few different versions of uh, items that we are all making with this same kit. All right, make sure this is up the right way. And just burnishing down. Okay, so I've got the main parts of my accordions done. Uh, now I just have the little, little strip. So this is going to be sitting right there when I'm all said and done. I'm just gonna move that. So then my little flaps here turn out to be three by five. So on this side, so I'm just gonna cut them. Oh, did I say three? Yeah, so I'm going to cut them at 275 so that they fit a little bit. And I think I'm going to use another one of these cards here to cut. Oh, actually, no, I'm going to wait because I forgot the front part here. You kind of overlap a little bit. So I might actually use some of my pieces here to just put... That's what I'll do to put a little pocket on the front here. So I'll just snip that at three. Perfect. Distress it around. And I'm just going to tape it and put it down there. Tape or glue, whichever you choose. Again, totally up to you. Just put that on there. So I'm not, I'm not embellishing this the same as I did the other one. I'm just giving you a general idea of the variations that you could definitely put on this. Okay, so now I've got a little pocket for whatever I so choose there. Um, on the back side here, I'm not sure what I'm going to do. Um, but I'll figure these parts out first. But this point is where I wanted to get to show you um, how to do the closure for this. So first you need to pick whatever little part that you want to go over. Um, on my first one, this was the card that I used. So I'm just going to go through her kit here and find something. I've got her kit just laid out everywhere ah perfect um so she's got a bunch of little cards here and i think excellent i'm going to use one of these cards i'm just going to cut it down to fit and you can do this whatever size you want okay perfect uh, so that mine will be I can either do it this way or I can do it this way I may end up doing it this way perfect um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut two of these cards one for the front one for the back because they're the same size that way you don't see the ribbon mechanics in there. So I'll have two back to back. And of course, I will ink them. Um, and now what you're going to need is whatever you're going to close this whole thing with. And I'm going to use a piece of fabric like I did for the first one. I've got some uh, old linen here that's been 
cut into pieces. I'm just going to tear myself a nice long piece if I could find my scissors. And I'm just going to tear a piece. But you could use a ribbon. You could use, honestly, anything you want on like this. But just make sure it's going to be long enough for you to tie it up, which this one will be. Uh, so all I do is put it down in your position. You're going to just lay it up so that you can remember. Because you got to make sure I'm doing my tie over this side. So obviously you're going to have more ribbon to one side. So basically all I do is kind of lay it there, try and tie the bow so that I can see how much I need to switch it over. So if I was to tie my bow here, oh, my one tail would be longer than the other. So you just got to make sure to even it out enough so when you do do your tie it'll be perfect excellent in my case that will be perfect there so I'm just going to undo it actually I should leave it in a knot so I'm going to flip it over and because this is going to be, this whole base is going to be glued down, I am going to just use a piece of two-sided tape on the ribbon on the back here, just to secure it. So you can see I just put a little piece of two-sided tape to the fabric in the position. Stick it down. That way it's secure while you're doing all the rest of this stuff and uh, you don't have to worry. I'm just going to distress my card here a little bit because we're going to secure it to the fabric closure now. And I'm doing it to both sides just in case I got one card slightly bigger than the other. If the edge shows a little bit, you'll just see this, not that stark white background. Um, again, though, you could have done this on cardstock. Uh, colored cardstock on both sides or coffee dyed on both sides just to eliminate this but I didn't think about that until just now so I'll just rub this on to take off that edge okay so this card is going to be my top card so you're going to make sure your ribbon is going to come over this way because you're going to tape it underneath your top card and all I'm going to do is run a small strip in here again to hold it in place because we're going to glue the back card on which will secure it better but this is just to give us a little bit of time to get everything working here okay peel that up and you know flat and then just press my card into place okay so now you can see we've got this so this is where you're gonna just double check that your cards the right size which is perfect so now this is where you're gonna make sure that this is really secure so I'm gonna go around with two-sided tape right to the edge but I'm also going to add, I'm just going to make sure my ribbon is unfurled a little bit. But I'm also going to add wet glue to give it that extra bite. Because this is a closure, you don't want it to be sliding out underneath the tape. I like to do both in this case so that uh, it's very sturdy. So I'm just going to burnish my tape down. Make sure you get it, a good grip on that ribbon there. lost there's my pokey stick peel these off and 
and this is the point where I'm going to do some wet glue. Uh, I use Fabri-Tac um, to hold this all on. And I put a big blob on the ribbon parts there just to make sure it takes. So then line up your backing card perfectly. Which looks like I actually did for once. And just give it a good burnish. Okay. If your back card sticks out over top a little bit, like, oh, see, I thought I did my perfect. It didn't. But so this is when I just go in with a pair of scissors and trim it down. Obviously, don't cut your ribbon. Just trim it here. Got just a few edges. There. That's all better. So there. So now you've got your closure. And I'm just going to tie it into its little bow. I'll tidy up the ends of that later. But that gives you an idea of that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to secure this to here. And all I'm going to do, again, is I'm going to run sure that's all flat on the back here. I'm going to run some two-sided tape around the outside of this again. All the way around. One strip down the middle. Burnish it in good. And then I'm going to apply some wet glue again in the middle of it to give it the extra hold. And see in the back here, this will cover up that seam that we had that we matted um, some paper on the inside part of it. But on the back side here, it'll be flush to the back of our little folio. And again, generous with the glue, especially over that ribbon so that it's not going to slide on you, your closure. All right. And position it. My closure I want this way. And you can do it at the top or the bottom, but I'm actually just matting it pretty much in the middle. Give it a good burnish. This is where I open it up and give it a good going over with your uh, burnishing tool. Okay, so now it's secure. So what I'm going to do now is, is I'm going to poke some holes in the middle of this for my journal because my journal is going to go on the bottom half but it's going to be stitched in through this spine and basically get my ruler out and all I do is line it up because we know it is a five inch we know that the middle part is two and a half poke a hole at the two and a half mark in the middle of the spine and then what I did is I poked a hole at the four inch mark and I poked a hole at the one inch mark right in the middle of the spine I just did just three holes on this because it's just a little journal that you're attaching in there and I just used my uh, piercing mat I have here basically just a giant foam mat and you can see now I've put my three holes in so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and put together some papers for this uh, journal part here and then I'll be back to show you what I did after that okay so for the journal in this one what I did is I took five pieces of this craft paper it's eight and a half by 11. So I cut it down to five inches this way because we know our folio is uh, five inches across. 
and then I folded it from the eight and a half by 11 size. I just folded the 11 inch size in half. So it's not going to the whole bottom. Oops, move that up so you can see. It's not going right to the bottom of my journal because I want it kept up here a bit. So this worked perfectly. And then I did the same thing. I lined it up with my ruler and did the first hole at the two and a half mark. I did this hole at the four inch mark and I did this hole at the one inch mark. And now I'm just going to basically stitch it into my spine. So I'm going to just poke it through the middle hole, line it up onto my spine hole there. I'm just going to pull it through. I am actually just using some, um, it's a loom starter, I guess this is called, it's like crochet cotton basically. And I usually use that for my stitching my spines on. So I'm just going down, coming up on the other side. I'm not doing anything fancy. I'm just doing a three hole pamphlet stitch here. Stitching it down on the other side. And this is why you also want that spine reinforced with the two layers of card spot stock like we did in the beginning. So I'm just pulling it through. And then back up the middle again. And we're gonna hide all this top stitching on there when we put the top cover piece on the spine. Oops, do that. Pull it through. Make sure I'm on one side of each. I mean, there's a lot of tutorials on how to do pamphlet stitch, so I'm not really showing you how. I'm gonna assume you know how, or there are plenty of places to find those on there. Just gonna tie it off nice and tight. trim my tails ever so slightly okay so then we just have that and then you can see now I've got my pocket underneath here where you can put some tags and things underneath you've got your little journal you've got your top part here closure which you're going to decorate and embellish I'm just tying my bow so and then now this is where you can do your cover so you can cover it up here i put a little piece here remember this is a half inch spine so i just did that on there and decorate your back however you choose and that is how i made that um thanks for coming stopping by uh don't forget to hit that like button don't forget to subscribe Check out all the people who are also doing this collaboration with Sweet Pea Papers. Um, I will tag all that below and I will see you again soon. Thanks for coming out.